Hi, my name is Vinay and with this video, I will demonstrate a feature of Microwin which is Verilog compiler using Verilog compiler. So when you open Microwin software, so it has a menu which is called as compile. So with the help of this, you can compile a single line syntax of Verilog uh, and you can convert any expression, uh, a valid expression of any gate into a layout. So there are some basic templates are available which are written for inverter and NAND uh, basic uh, logic operators. And apart from this, you can even compile a complete Verilog file to um, layout. Okay, so I will be demonstrating both of them. Uh, right now, Microwin has started in a default 14 nanometer FinFET design rule file. So I will use the same. So for example, you want to make and uh, and uh, maybe okay let's take some compiled uh, an AND gate so you just select AND gate and it will compile the AND gate for you so here you can see that this is an NAND gate uh, formation followed by inversion of it of the output so that means that will make an AND gate okay. so if you want to simulate this you have to just double click on the nodes which are input A, B and here you have your output node which is AND okay so you have double click on A and apply a clock. So let's say this is uh, point 0.1 and uh, point 0.1 and you have to enable this flag with that is it should be visible in simulation otherwise it will not display. Although it will apply the clock but it might not be visible in simulation if you miss that. Automatically microwind uh, applies the next input as double of it. So it has done point 0.2, point 0.2 and you just click on this visible in simulation. <coughs> Then double click on AND gate output and just make it visible in simulation because this has to be a variable only. So if you wish you can change the background color and just simulate this. So here you can see that for 0, 0 it is 0, for 1, 0 and 0, 1 it is 0 and for 1, 1 it is producing 1 output. So thereby we can conclude that this is working as an AND gate. Okay. So, uh, if you want to continue further, maybe, okay, let's take another example, okay. Uh, I just take one logic gate as inverter, okay, so make it one inverter and followed by another one, followed by another one. So I, I, I do it three times, okay. So you have three inverter and uh, you can double click on the nodes and you can see that this is my uh, this is my input and the output of the inverter okay so what i can do i can make this as a ring oscillator so for this i have to take one metal one select the metal one and draw a block between the output of this first inverter till the input of the next inverter then i double click it should show the, the joining of both so you can see that it is highlighting the both nodes now when i select the output node of the second stage inverter so it shows only the one so it is not uh, connected with the next stage so again i have to select the uh, metal one and draw a block between the output of the second and input of the first, uh, third one now this is the output of the third stage. This is the output of the third stage. So I just draw a block over here, a metal line, and take it to the input of the first stage. So I just draw an horizontal line back and join it to here. Okay. So <clears throat> there you are. If you double click on this node, so you can see the output of the third stage inverter is connected to the first stage inverter. Now we can simulate this and you will see that nothing comes out in the simulation because we have not enabled the output. So this is my, I assume that this is my output, although every node is in, uh, technically an output, but I just take the third state. So double click on this and say visible in simulation. There is no input required because this is an uh, back to back connected inverter. So they should oscillate freely. So here you can see that this guy starts oscillating when it turns on and you just click on more and it will keep on oscillating forever. 
So the, the thing is that you can go to frequency versus time graph and now you can just uh, make the graph visible till 50 gigahertz and you can see that it is by default oscillating in between uh, oh, okay more than 50. So it keep on oscillating and then settles down to 110 gigahertz. Okay, maybe I'll just add it to 120. <clears throat> so maybe 150. No, that's it. Okay, so it goes till this range or 110 and it will start oscillating at 110. Maybe I just add a small load to see and visible output. So I take a virtual capacitor and attach to this output node and let that value be very small 0 0.001 picofarad and simulate. <clears throat> so you can see the oscillation frequency comes down to 67 uh, gigahertz. and it will keep on going over there. So you can see that how you can quickly compile three inverters and back to back connect it and make them working. So this is all in FinFET design. So if you look on the FinFET design, so this is a 3D view of it. So this is a 3D view on the FinFET design. You can study how uh, the construction has been made of the inverter. So you can remove the metal layer and you can study. So this is the gate of the both PMOS and NMOS. So here you have the NMOS type of infet and this is a P type infet. Okay. And uh, so this is the gate material. And what you see a polyline is this is for the extra uh, production layers. Okay. To avoid the chemical ditching, which are called as dummy gates. So these are all dummy gates which are being placed on side of the gate so that the doing the vapor uh, process it do not damages the gate mat the main gate material okay so these are all dummy gates which are used for protection of the main transistors okay they do not play any role in the simulation or anything during the they are only used during the fabrication okay now uh, as we are into the verilog compilation part so we can even compile the verilog file the, okay now the point is from where do i get the verilog file so for this, you can draw a schematic and convert to a schematic, uh, Verilog file. So we have a partnering software named DSCH. So here you can create any kind of your schematic and convert into a layout. So for example, you can just drag drop an inverter, maybe another one, and maybe another one. Okay. And I just take an AND gate and connect to the input. So you can join the yellow dots or you can just place on the side so you just right click and start making connection both of the softwares are very uh, easy to use they have a very short learning curve so i won't be going in detail about what to click and how not to click the students figure out in five minutes and start playing with the software so i just save this file somewhere on my uh, folder okay maybe i just type it as ring one okay so here you can see that we have made a simple ring oscillator but with enable so you can double click on this and rename this as enable okay and when you start simulation so you can see that the output is uh, static to one because that is the inverting chain but when you make enable as one so you can see that the output start oscillation okay and you stop it and look at the plot so there you see that uh, when the enable was zero it was not oscillating and when enable was one it started oscillating okay right so now we can just save this this is already saved we can ask him to convert into verilog file so dscs will convert this into a verilog file necklace and this we can make use also it applies some simulation inputs but uh, the they he generally applies clock signals to all the inputs so if you want to apply a different signal you have to manually edit it so i go back to micro so where i'm working on a 40 nanometer fin pet 
uh, technology will file. I just go to compile the log file and browse to the folder where my file was stored. And this is the ring one which is just now generated. And just say compile. I do nothing as of now. So within few seconds, it will convert that uh, schematic into a layout of yours. Okay, so here you can see that this is one inverter, second, third inverter, and here you have that NAND gate. So you see this is a NAND gate followed with an inverter. So you can see the output of this inverter is connected to the first inverter input. And uh, if we just double click, okay. So if you click, double click on any electrical node, it shows uh, the linkage between the nodes. So you can see that the output of AND gate is connected to the first stage and the output of this inverter is connected to the input of the next inverter. So it has made all the connections. So you can just double click on the enable and maybe you can just make it uh, enable for three and uh, or maybe five. So it is enabled for 5 nanoseconds and disabled for 5 nanoseconds. So it's high and low time period. So I'll just change the background color and simulate. Okay, so we just go to 10 nanoseconds for simulation. So for the first 5 nanoseconds, it won't be oscillating, but after 5 nanoseconds, it starts oscillating. Okay, and thereby it goes. So we can go to uh, more and uh, it will repeat the same stuff it is off and on okay. if you want to see the the power dissipation effects you can click five nanoseconds and when you reset this you can see the current so it's around 0.151 microwatt but when you click more so for the next five nanoseconds it is only oscillating so it will compute the power consumption during this simulation cycle so which is around uh, almost 71.9 or 72 uh, microwatt. If you click more one more time, so it is not oscillating, so it comes back to 0.15 or 0.2, slightly more because there was one pulse added over here. So you can even see the frequency versus time graph, and uh, you can see that it is oscillating at almost 60 gigahertz of frequency, slightly more than our first implementation. That is because the delay of the AND gate is being included in the simulation cycle. So this is how you can make use of parallel compiler. Okay. So this is how your layout will look like. While compilation, you can also perform some experiment. For example, you can just save this file somewhere in the folder, first of all. And then you can just say compile Verilog file. Let me see. Uh, when you select ring one. So you can ask him to optimize the Verilog file for wired delays. So you can it will rearrange the netlist in case he finds that something better is there. Okay, I have to uh, enable the saving part. Okay, so maybe I just click a new file. Yeah, is there? Okay, so what I do is I just click a new file and compile the same file again. So this is the ring one and this time I will ask him to do an optimization for the wires and compile the file here. Okay, so this is the kind of layout he has generated. Okay, and uh, I just save this file as the second one. Maybe this is I call as ring two. Now I can just insert uh, layout. And I'll just compare side by side. Is there any difference in both of the layouts? So here you can see that this is the first implementation in which uh, he has just kept the Verilog netlist as it is. And this is the second netlist in which he has done a wire optimization. So in this case, you can see that uh, instead of having a one long wire, he has placed in the multiple segments. So he has shuffled the gates and he has rerouted the wiring. So he has tried to optimize the uh, wire delays. Okay. 
So this is how micro works in a little bit of optimization. Uh, so this will let the students understand how the optimization works by sequencing of the gate in the order of the distance they are placed for the wiring dis uh, delays. So this is about the micro and viral compiler. I hope you can do some significant out of that. Uh, thank you for watching this video.